Hello everybody and welcome to Provis Gaming. Let's play some more Hearts of Iron 4 Kaiserreich. It's been a while since we last played this mod pack. We are currently up to version 0.9.3 Aurora Borealis, uh, so obviously it has advanced a little bit since the last time we played. Last time I got a little bit peeved at the game because the developers made it a lot harder to integrate nations and properly blob out without causing tremendous amounts of instability in your nation. And that may still hold a little bit true, but I've had some time to cool off. And by some time, I mean several months. So I want to jump back into it because it's a really, really fun mod. If you have not seen Kaiserreich before, the entire premise is what if Germany had won World War I? How would the world look different? The answer is very different. you got the German Empire, the Britain has fallen into uh, syndicalism, so have the French. There's a lot of different kingdoms and empires that still exist. Europe, of course, looks very different here. The Ottomans are still a powerhouse. The French Republic are banished away from the Commune of France. The USA is going to descend into another civil war. It's a really, really awesome alternate history mod, and I love everything about it. Now, Aurora Borealis, I believe, uh, is focusing primarily in the Scandinavian region, and that would be a fun target for this game. But instead, we are going to go a bit further south to another nation that I think doesn't get quite enough attention, and that is the Sultanate of Egypt. It's a pretty fun nation, not outrageously powerful at the beginning of the game, but basically the story of these guys is during the fall of the British Empire when the Union of Britain was falling into syndicalism, uh, nationalism in Egypt surged and they fled a rebellion to become their own independent state. And they rather hate the colonial British powers as a result. The Germans stepped in and took control of the Suez Canal to maintain the world economy, so there's going to be a bit of tensions between the Sultanate of Egypt and the German Empire that may or may not lead into hostilities later, I don't know. Also, we absolutely hate the Ottomans with a passion. Basically, think of us as Mamluks 2.0. Now, we are initially going to be led by the social conservatives, and there are three different paths we can take with Egypt eventually. Uh, we can either lead to a more liberal, progressive stronghold and become a model state to the rest of the world, or we can embrace our conservatism and actually try to revert back to pharaohism, which will be really cool. And then uh, we could also embrace our Islamic identity and become more of a theocratic state. Personally, I think we have to go down the pharaoh route. Going for a liberal empire? Easy. Almost anyone can do that. Going for an Islamist empire? Probably a lot of other candidates, but pharaohs. Now that is something truly only the Egyptians can hold claim to. So we're going to play as the Sultanate of Egypt and see how well we can fare against our mortal enemies, the Ottomans. I do believe that the Egyptians also are able to form their own faction as well, which is pretty fun. So we'll get to be the faction leader of, hopefully, a lot of Africa and the Middle East. Maybe we'll find ourselves allying up with the Germans or the Russians, not too sure yet. Pretty sure one way or the other, though, we are going to hate everything that is British. That just seems highly likely to me. Okay, so we are obviously playing with the Man the Guns expansion of the game, so naval warfare is going to be completely different. There is a lot about Kaiser Reich that has changed since the last time I played, so I might miss a few things, but if people want to leave me some comments down below, I am open to reading their suggestions. Let's go ahead and get started with, again, just some basic engineering. Always, always, always want to go for that extra construction and production and research tech speed. Uh, as far as our civilian economy, we have, it looks like, six civilian factories and only... Three military factories, which is uh, pff, not that great, but okay. Um, we're going to start probably by building at least a couple more civilian factories just so we can build things faster. And as we expand and grab more territory, I will try focusing on some military engagement. But in the meantime, yeah, we're just going to have to go for the civilian economy right now. Uh, for trade, we are currently lacking in steel. So I'm going to go ahead and trade with the German Empire and try to get that back up for our production. Right now we're making basic infantry equipment and support equipment. We want to do artillery and fighters, but we can't do either of those, so that's just going to have to be what it is for now. And apparently we are using interwar light ship holes. I haven't seen the new holes yet. Oh, wow. Okay. So they all look like versions of weird steamboats. Um, that's fun. Something I do know is a little bit weird in Kaiserreich is you can actually go to the decisions tree here and develop your technology for naval research from here if we want to. So you can spend some political power and some uh, command power. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, command power. In order to develop various different technologies from armored cruisers, battleships, dreadnoughts, and submarines. So I actually have no idea. How does that change like your naval research? Whoa, okay. This has changed an absolute ton in Kaiserreich. That's fun. Okay, screens and submarines. Now, I don't know... Okay, so it is still organized by year going down, not from left to right. So presumably you get your new holes via the decisions, and then you have to research different ways of 
upgrading those holes for more customized ships. Now, that is fascinating. I'm not sure we're going to be very heavily involved in the um, naval game as Egypt, but, I mean, we can try. Sure as heck can try. All right. Land doctrines. We're probably going to go for grand battle plan, but I'll show you why in just a little bit. Artillery, nothing new there. Armor looks pretty normal down there. Support companies, nothing new. And infantry, okay. So this is all pretty familiar. It's mostly just the naval game that has been completely revamped from what I am used to. As far as our starting divisions, we do have some 20 combat with, I'm sorry, 18 combat with divisions ready to go. So we could start training up a few of those, and I probably should at least get a couple. But I don't anticipate that we're going to have very many. We'll build those up in Alexandria. We're going to have a huge deficit in supplies for at least a while. And the rest of these guys here, let's just go ahead and focus on one army for now. We'll just go ahead and set up a border against, uh, let's say, against the Ottomans, just in case they have some early aggression. I have heard that the Ottomans got boosted at some point in some recent patches, so playing as Egypt is a little bit more difficult than it used to be, but I have no idea how much truth there is to that. Uh, we'll go ahead and assign you down here as well. Okay, the Sultanate of Egypt! The history of modern Egypt conventionally began in 1882, when Egypt joined the British sphere of influence in the region, a situation that conflicted with Egypt's de jure position as part of the Ottoman Empire. In 1914, the Protectorate was made official with the title of Head of the State, which was changed from Pasha to Khedive in 1867, was again changed to Sultan. This formally repudiated the vestigial suzerainty of the Ottoman Sultan of Constantinople, who was backing the central powers in the Weltkrieg. Abbas II was deposed by the British and replaced by Sultan by his uncle, Hussein Kamil. Upon his death in 1917, his only son, Prince Kamal al-Din Hussein, declined the succession, and instead the brother ascended as Fuad I. I hope I'm saying all that right. With the ratification of the Peace of, with Honor, Egypt remained part of the now weakened British sphere. It increases anger within the Egyptian populace and exploded into violence. We have a revolution. We prove our legitimacy by leading the people. The revolution was largely nationalistic, uniting Egyptians of all social classes to get rid of the British once and for all. And then we also wrote up a constitution based around the German model. In the chaos of the revolution, the Germans seized the Suez Canal, which Egypt reluctantly accepted in order to avoid a conflict with the German Empire. Since the revolution... There has been a conflict between liberals that seek to go further and make the monarchy a true constitutional monarchy, and conservatives that wish to keep the status quo. Moreover, as 1936 arrives, the Sultanate's eyes go increasingly upon the young Farouk, the heir to the throne, who is being groomed for the throne. With the decline of the Ottoman Empire, members of all political parties begin to wonder and plan the restoring of the might of Egypt and dreaming of an Ottoman free Middle East. We shall be masters of our own dynasty! Okay. Well... Uh, I guess we just go ahead and start ramping up. Now, let's take a look at our national focuses. Now, the unfortunate thing about national focus tree here in Egypt is that uh, it's pretty linear, at least at the beginning of the game. We have to wait until Black Monday begins to do literally anything. And then we're going to start working our way down Black Monday, figure out the whole Black Monday is over thing, get to Farouk's reforms, at which point, I believe, then we can start working on things like modernization programs, or start working on our army, naval, and aviation reforms. So these four trees are completely locked until we get down to Farouk's reforms. We also want to get to the Cairo Pact, which you can't do anything until 1937. But this is where you get to start developing your faction and eventually fight the Ottomans. Then we have to decide if we're going to side with the Arabs or with Persia, and so on and so forth. It's going to be interesting. I am going into this semi-blind. I just pretty much have outlined everything I know up to this point. So it's going to be an adventure trying to succeed here. We have to wait until Black Monday, though. That's going to begin relatively soon, if I recall correctly. I guess we could start focusing on something down here. Uh, I guess... I guess temporarily I could start working on... This doesn't do any... Um, this doesn't do civilian factories, so there's actually not a lot of gain here either. Army training? No. No, there's actually nothing really to focus on. I guess we just go ahead and start stocking up on some political power. Oh, President Kerensky was shot and killed in the Russia, so that's going to lead to some problems. Russia actually would be a very fun campaign uh, in Kaiserreich, mainly because Russia can go in literally any direction. We can become an empire, we can become communist, we can become pretty much anything. Questions of Egyptian identity. When the Egyptian Revolution in 1925 happened, questions started to emerge asking, what does it mean to be Egyptian? When was Egypt great? For it was the first time in centuries that we are free and independent, and now we are able to properly ask these questions. Thus, two concepts of what it means to be Egyptian have formed looking through the romanticism, 
though at radically different periods in Egyptian history. The first camp is known as Pharaohism. They looked to the pre-Islamic past, to the days of the pharaohs, for a time when Egypt was truly great and powerful. They argue as a Mediterranean civilization and stress the Mediterranean seas within Egyptian culture, though they do not reflect, uh, neglect the Nile, largely it aligns with liberal parties, though strictly speaking it is not liberal, and even some of the Watani support it. It is by far the most influential form of identity in 1936. The second is Islamist uh, movement, which multi-ethnic and tolerant Egypt dominant. Yeah, so this is a very uh, conservative way of doing things, become far more theocratic in our nation. So it should be noted that both camps support a multi-ethnic Egypt, both Fairnists and Islamists believe that Egypt has always been a multi-ethnic state. Both concepts are largely romantic nationalist in nature and have an impact upon culture and the arts. So obviously, as I said, we're going to go down the Fairnist route because that's a very uniquely Egyptian way of playing the game. So that does mean, I guess, we're going to follow semi-liberalistic kind of policies. So I imagine that the Watani social conservatives are not going to be in charge for... Absolutely forever. Uh, at the start of the game, we have a volunteer-only military conscription law, export focus, and a civilian economy, so that's going to be fun. We do have a few ministers, primarily those who are very good at giving us more political power. So we are actually generating 1.97 political power per day, which is not too bad. The Totalist Charter, Mussolini, Valois, and Berea, and other interested parties have uh, decided to form a national syndicalism totalism movement. So there's a whole new thing going on there for these syndicalists. Um, I don't really remember a ton about syndicalism and how that all works. There's a lot of different internal parties to syndicalism. Edward VIII crowned as King of Britain. Okay. There's King of the Two Sicilies down here, so uh, don't forget that there is a bit of a national civil war going on in Italy. You have the Italian Republic, the Socialist Republic of Italy, the Kingdom of the Two Sicilies, and the Papal State. Not to mention Sardinia is also independent. The Kingdom of Austria, da -da -da. Yugoslavia looks very, very different. Poland is pretty weak. Ukraine is massive. There is the Baltics united under the Baltic Duchy. Yeah, a lot of cool stuff going on here in Kaiserreich. It's a very, very different political landscape. Afghanistan declares war on the Dominion of India. Yep, that is going to happen. India is not actually united. There are several different kingdoms here, so that's fun. Come on, Black Friday. I don't remember when that starts. Is that 1937? It might be 1937. There it is. Never mind. On the 3rd February of 1936, the Berlin Stock Exchange stopped sinking. It plunged. So this is going to start the whole Great Depression. Mein Gott. I don't know why we're speaking German, but we are. Now we can go to a national focus. Wait a day. Hang on. Okay, now can I? No, nope, we have to wait until it hits us. Well, darn it. Should hit us pretty soon. Electoral gridlock in France. The syndicalists can't decide what path they want to go. And now it had hit us. Okay, so Black Monday. Construction speed goes down, production goes down, factory output goes down, stability goes down, war support goes down. Everything is awful! Alright, Black Monday. Now we have to begin our recovery. That means we get a research bonus for industry, and we get a little bit of political power. This is, again, a very linear begin. Almost every uh, campaign in Kaiserreich seems to start this way in some way. Uh, you kind of have to wait to for Black Monday to begin, and then you just kind of go from there. We could hire somebody for our uh, Center of Military Intelligence. Uh, I guess a little bit more political power gain is not the worst thing in the world. More research speed could be kind of nice. <laughs> do I want more political power gain, or do I want to have research speed? Um, I have to think that research speed would be good for us. We could kind of focus more on social conservatives here, uh, but I think I will start switching over to market liberals in preparation for the eventual liberalization that comes with pharaonism. But a tiny bit of extra research speed might make a difference. It's not a huge amount. I mean, right now we are apparently have an illiterate populace, so we are at minus 16.7 research speed. It's going to be very difficult for us to actually catch up to the rest of the world. Ash Shams founded. Today, the Jer Jewish journalist Said Malki has founded the newspaper Ashams to support the ideas of Egyptian nationalism. In particular, the newspaper has attracted attention for its calls for Egypt to take control of Jerusalem and the Jewish Holy Land. That's an interesting plot twist that I did not know existed in the game. Fascinating. Okay. Sure. Yeah, I can kind of get behind that. That'll be fun. So, Egypt is going to be semi-Zionist? Hey, I guess any excuse to go to war with the Ottoman Empire is going to be just fine with us, right? Probably. Uh, when do we want to do... 
We need naval dockyards. If we had a lot of naval dockyards and some available civilian factories, we could start developing new technology for our ships. That would be kind of fun to do, but I think it's going to have to wait a little while. We're not building anything, like, fast at all. Because we just don't have a lot of factories available. At all. And we have a lot of consumer goods. And it's freaking Black Monday. Also a civilian economy. Like, everything is terrible to start with. We really just have to wait until this is done. Restoration of democracy in Australasia. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. So Australia and New Zealand have their own confederation down over here, free of the British Empire. Uh, the Dutch are actually fairly strong in Indonesia. That's always kind of cool. And yeah, you can see here that Germany actually does have a lot of control throughout uh, China. I actually don't remember it being this large. AOG? I think they changed this recently. Or maybe this is something different and it's a puppet? It is. It's a puppet of the German Empire. This is actual German territory in East Asia. Also technically a puppet, but still fun. Yeah. I'm waiting for that. Uh, I want to see what's going to happen with the uh, American Civil War. Apparently, they've made some changes here as well. Technically, you could go down a route that assassinates one of the leaders of either the Syndicalists or the Nationalists, Long or Reed, and prevent their faction from uh, firing in the first place if you're careful. But it is unavoidable. There will be a Civil War in America. Usually the Syndicalists win. Every once in a while it's the Nationalists. I don't think I've ever really seen the Democratic... Well, I say Democratic. The Military Junta uh, survive. They can, though. Alright, so we want to secure the cotton fields or secure our holdings. They do the exact same thing. However, they lead to different options. Uh, civilian factories would be nice. I guess we'll secure the cotton fields to begin with. A little bit of stability would go a long way. Just kind of improve our construction speed, get our political power back up there, more output. The Papal Conclave, Catholic Faithful, whoop, hang on. Breathe a sigh of relief as a chapel has white smoke. Okay, so there is a new Pope. Uh, that is always a fun event. There's like four different Popes that can fire. And which one fires is actually going to have a huge impact on who wins in Italy. Kind of fun. Tibet joins the Great Comet. Really? Okay, so there's the Great Khanet. That's a faction right there. The Entente still exists. The Reichspacht exists over here. And there's the Third International. And pretty soon, we'll form our own faction, the Cairo Pact. I say pretty soon. we got to wait a year, but still. All right, so secure those cotton fields. We have our electrical mechanical engineering. Uh, we probably will go directly for some civilian factories and then try to remove the National Spirit of Black Monday ASAP. Then we'll worry about securing our holdings and then get down to the Farouk's reforms. You actually can't do this until Black Monday is over anyway. Uh, I think. So, also we need Farouk to be the Sultan. Right. I guess that means that we have to die. Probably. Let's go for some more research speed. I'm just trying to undo a lot of the negative impacts we have from an illiterate populace. Uh, and as long as we are always focusing on building up our industry, that's fine. I'm not really worried about getting better in uh, military equipment quite yet. Not until we have a strong economy ready to go with, and that's going to take some dang research. We are slowly but surely working our way through the deficit. How much uh, production do we have right now? <laughs> Four guns per day. Woohoo. The death of Sultan Fuad I. Today, tragic news hits the Sultanate. Sultan Fuad is now dead. The people are in mourning. Now, though the throne goes to the young 16-year-old Farouk, who will inherit the throne. While he has been trained for the throne, few know how he will govern. Base stability goes down because, of course, when the leader dies, things are chaotic. And we ascend to the throne as the Sultan of Egypt. All right, so we're going to have to do some reforming. That should be kind of fun. Uh, let's see. We are not producing much goods, like, at all. I really need to conquer some new stuff. Or, better yet, we could actually worry about building up some infrastructure... Whoop, okay, the ARG declares war on the Republic of China. Could build some infrastructure and try to get some more steel and tungsten to export, if at all possible. But right now, yeah, we, we don't have a lot of goods. We are not a very powerful nation. We are rather weak. Uh, I guess to go to protect industry, we do have to secure the holdings, don't we? Well, let's go for the extra civilian factory, just to kind of speed things up a tiny bit. But yeah, Black Monday, let's see. Land-owning elites. So, political power cost apparently goes down. Resource gain efficiency, consumer goods, stability. Yeah, that kind of sucks. Argentina has things going on. Inexperienced military. Ooh. That kind of sucks. Illiterate populace. Yep, terrible. Agrarian economy. More consumer goods. Production efficiency cap. This is just terrible. Yeah, Egypt is in a really, really bad spot at the beginning of the game. I would love to get away from the civilian economy. I'd love even more to get to a partial mobilization. 
To do that, we would need 200 political power. So I guess there's really no harm in going for early immobilization first and then working our way up. That's one of the changes I liked about Kaiserreich from the vanilla game, where it was usually better to wait until you had the right conditions to just save the political power and jump to the next level or maybe even war economy. But in this game, you kind of need to ramp it up. So I will be going for the early mobilization. That should reduce our consumer goods a little bit and hopefully allow us to start building a little bit sooner. So now it takes us like, I don't know, two years to build factories. We'll improve on that soon enough. Hello, you filthy Turks. Electoral gridlock in Britain. Hmm, the syndicalists are having a hard time. Now, I did say earlier that we had to go down the Grand Battle Plan Doctrine for our land doctrine. And the reason why is we will be rushing for army reforms once we start working on Farouk's reforms. Uh, and that's because you have to go down... Well, if we want to be powerful enough to fight the Ottomans, I think we have to go down army reforms. But there are two paths you can take. You can take either Mobile Warfare or Grand Battle Plan. Mobile Warfare sounds good, like it's for all tanks, right? But really... We're not going to have a lot of tanks, because our research is pretty terrible. Instead, we actually focus on cavalry. Cavalry, camels, and all that stuff. I don't really care for cavalry, so I guess I'd rather go down Grand Battle Plan and start really focusing on better infantry instead. That just makes the most sense. So we will be going down that route, and if that's the case, there's no point in going for Superior Firepower Doctrine, which I typically do prefer. We will be going for that, uh, that Grand Battle Plan instead. Um, let's see. Dispersed or concentrated? I think we're going to have to go for concentrated. So let's go ahead and start ramping up our production capacity a little bit more. I'd like to start producing a lot more freaking guns so I can train a lot more stuff. We actually probably should stop with the support equipment. Um, and I am... I don't necessarily want to delete the line, though, because we'll lose all this efficiency. Boo. Yeah, I think we'll I think we'll stick with what we've got for now, but I'm not I'm not super thrilled about it. Cotton subsidies are gonna be finishing up pretty soon. We'll get that extra civilian factory going just to speed things along. We're clawing our way up to victory, I swear to god. It's gonna take a while though. Uh let's see. We need to get to secure holdings so we can get a bit more stability. Coup d'etat in Siam. Okay, so that's gonna be fun. Uh what's happening down over here? Yeah, the Kingdom of Siam is having a hard time. So they're currently down the authoritarian democracy route. What's going on in Egypt? They are currently social conservatives as well. Not fascists. Not at all. Italian majority. So the socialist republic... Okay, so that's just more so, uh, syndicalist infighting. The syndicalist game actually is quite interesting in Kaiserreich. I don't think we've ever played syndicalist on this channel. We may want to do that at some point. It would be kind of fun to play as, let's say, the Commune of France. I know it's a powerful nation... But it's fun. They're really fun to play as. You can just take over a lot of cool stuff. Fight the freaking French Republic. Take on the German Empire. Uh, let's let's see how the balance works. Let's see how the balance works for um, Kaiserreich and how I feel about integrating and blobbing. And if I really want to play more Kaiserreich, there's a lot of cool stuff we could do. Probably try to form the Nordic Empire as either Sweden or Norway or maybe even Finland. Finland has some fun. Russia would be a very good campaign. There's some good stuff going on down in India. France, as I said, for a syndicalist playthrough. Could try to take over a lot of Central America on a different campaign. Canada actually is one of the better nations to play if you haven't tried it. Because they are currently led by the exiled king from the Union of Britain. And there's a whole national focus for the Canadians and the proper monarchy to reassert themselves on the Union of Britain. Cast out the syndicalists and take back over their homeland. It's pretty cool. Uh, we're not going to worry about any of that right now. Engineering could go for any of the reinforce rate. Not sure that I need it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. No, it's going to take a while. Do I want to do this? Would I rather work on some better tanks, maybe better guns? Let's go for the better guns. If we're going to be producing, then we might as well get the better stuff. Uh, let's protect our industry. Get another civilian factory going. So now we are up to four constructing over here. That does shave off a few months. Oh, freaking consumer goods, though, man. They take forever. At least we are getting a pretty good amount of political power per day. I think in a recent patch, in 0.9.3, they increased the base political power gain from 1 to 1.5. So all nations actually are getting more political power now than they used to, which is fun. Volunteer only, we could go to the limited conscription, that would get me more manpower, but I'm okay on that right now. I think the next goal absolutely has to be to get to partial mobilization. The coup d'etat in Siam uh, apparently has had a popularity plummet, so that's going to be fun for them. Don't really care about that. Poland elects a new king. Oh, right, because Poland still has the elective monarchy in this. That's pretty cool. There's actually a lot that I want to do 
in Hearts of Iron 4 right now. Now that I know that the channel really has a lot of interest in Hearts of Iron 4 content, there's a lot to do. Between mod packs and actually just vanilla uh, achievement runs, f such as forming the Byzantine Empire as Greece. That could be fun. Or surviving as Poland against the Germans and the Russians and actually reforming the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth and doing some fun things there. Or we want to play with Millennium Dawn, or, you know, I don't know, I, I've heard some constant requests for a certain My Little Pony-themed um, uh, campaign. I don't know how people will feel about that, but, I mean, that's a thing that we could do. We have maximum command power. Is there anything we can do down here? No. We could legislate some freedoms, gain some extra stability by losing a lot of political power. These are things that we could do. Uh, we could also rally some political support to try and make our political power uh, a little bit more solidified. But I think we are going to be going for the partial mobilization, get those consumer goods done and away. So now we have five factories that are working here. Uh, I don't think that actually changed from what we had before um, because the percentage is still not good enough, but oh well. Concentrated industry, done. A bit more factory production for us. Uh, could work on this. Let's see. Transports, maybe... What's going to help us the most against the Ottomans? We will want recon companies. I think we need to get some tanks. We don't have the production to back this up, but I'd like to go ahead and at least research this, get that going. Since we're going to be at least waiting a while before I get anything more immediately important, like, uh, let's say, research speed or production efficiency. Let's just go ahead and unlock the capability of having tanks. I don't know, maybe the Ottomans don't have tanks, and this is going to give me a huge advantage. Guess we'll find out. We should probably assign some generals. Let's see. You are reasonably good. Pretty good attack value, entrenchments, experience. Uh, alternatively, Hussein. You're a bit more defensive, but you have pretty good planning. I think we'll take the more offensive guy to start, and we can give you a trait. Charismatic, offensive doctrine, aggressive assaulter. Brilliant strategist means better breakthrough. That's pretty solid. Hard to say no to that. And then we do want to get... Oh, wait, he's my field marshal. Okay, what about general, though? Well, that's a really good attacker. This guy's actually solid as heck. All right, we're going to take you, put you in charge. Infantry expert for infantry division attack? Probably. Entrenchment's good for a defensive leader. And the way I've been playing Hearts of Iron 4 has actually been shifting lately. I'm starting to understand a bit more about how you actually want to be breaking up your armies. One that's more offensively uh, focused with a good offensive general. And one that's more defensively focused with a good defensive general that's primarily existing for entrenchment. And the way that I've been doing um, infantry divisions lately has kind of shifted. Now I actually go for four artillery in my offensive doctrines, or sorry, offensive divisions, just so I have a lot more of that early breakthrough to win against uh, early fights. I don't know. It, I'm, I'm trying to evolve. I'm trying to get better at Hearts of Iron 4. Not that I think I'm terrible to begin with, but there's definitely a lot of room for improvement on my end. I see that in the comment section all the dang time, so <laughs> I want to freaking improve. Belgian Declaration of Independence away from the Germans. Good luck, Belgium. Have fun with that, or do they break from the Netherlands? I don't remember which it is. Either way, the Germans, I think, can reassert their dominance over them pretty soon. We're going to reopen that stock exchange. The Mongol Empire apparently is growing. That's another fun playthrough right there. Form the freaking Mongols. All right, Black Monday is going to be over. We are rushing right to this. Get rid of that construction speed. Get rid of that production efficiency cap. Soviet Russia has declared war against the Russian Republic. So now we have the radical socialists, i.e. the communists, rising up. Let's see if the Russian Republic is able to deal with them. They have a reasonable number of troops. Soviet Republic should get crushed under Bukharin. Bukharin. I don't know who you are. We'll see. Belgium has joined the Reichspacht. Okay, so that faction is still growing powerful. The Reichspacht, very, very powerful. Very, very fun. Russian Republic declares war on Alash Orda, whoever that is. I'm guessing they have some other syndicalists rising up. Nope, I was just guessing by the red flag, but apparently not. So the Russian Republic apparently is feeling bold enough to attack multiple people. We'll see how that works out for them. The Russian Republic often does not survive and becomes an empire, but we'll see. We'll see what ends up happening over here. We are almost done training a troop. Congrats to me. We did the thing. Creation of the International Avant-Garde. Carpathia. Uh, yeah, a lot of fun stuff going on over there. Let's go ahead and set up a offensive line down this way. I want to grab Jerusalem, dang it. Apparently we have a Zionist movement here. The new Grand Imam of the Al-Azhar University. 
The Grand Imam of Al-Azhar is one of the most prestigious and influential positions in Egypt. The fact that Al-Azhar is one of the most prestigious universities in Egypt helps add to their influence. Today, though a new Grand Imam must be chosen and the two leading contenders are naturally divided between Farinist and Islamist camp. The Farinist candidate is Muhammad al-Zahawiri, Zawahiri, sorry, whom has earned praise for his efforts to support the university as well as his reformist ideals. The Islamist candidate is Mustafa Hassan Abdul Razek, who has earned praise for sparking a renaissance in Islamic philosophy within the university as well wanting to expand Islamic education. Whom shall be appointed? It must be the Pharaonists. More social liberalism and market liberalism. That's actually reducing my own popularity, which is a bit of a risky play. But now the uh, market liberals are almost contending with these social conservatives. We might find a new coalition forming in the near-ish future. All right, Black Monday, come on. We need to get Black Monday done with, and then we'll worry about ending this video. The 1936 general election. Oh, right, because we do have a constitution. I forgot. We're based off of the German constitution, which means we do have a monarch, but there are parties that are going to be uh, having their own elections, and that's going to affect our popularity quite a bit. So, Liberal Constitution Party. Politics will change. Social liberalism, market liberalism, social conservatism, or authoritarian de Democrats. Right now, I think I would rather secure the hold of the market liberals, but I'm kind of curious. Do we see evidence that there are any national focuses that will lead toward one party? Because you do want to have kind of a hege uh, hegemony within your nation, if possible. That's always better to have one party in complete dominance. You want a one-party state, ironically enough. I don't think that there are any national focuses in Egypt that favor a specific party, so we probably can choose whatever we want. And if that's the case, I'm going to go for the market liberals. Why? Because I'm a market liberal and it's freaking fun. <laughs> you don't see them get a lot of love in these freaking games. So yeah, market liberals are now going to be in control. They were also the largest party, so it just made the most sense. We are indeed now a market liberal country with 44% uh, control of the country. I did forget, though, various different parties do have different effects. We can send volunteer forces. We, can, we, we cannot puppet or join factions. So that's fun. Right, I forgot about that. Liberals do not want to go to war, whereas if we went down, let's say, a national populist route, that's kind of like going fascist. Hmm. Black Monday is officially over, which means now we can go for Farouk's reforms. That's going to be fun for us. We're going to go ahead and end this video here. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you are as excited about this series as I am. Egypt is going to be a very challenging nation. If I can at least defeat the Ottomans and take over, let's say, most of uh, Saudi Arabia and Persia with our faction, and maybe ally with the Germans to become pretty solidified in our control, I'll be pretty happy. That's at least my goal for the time being, not a world conquest. I don't think that's very likely, but we'll see. So thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If so, hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.